You know, to be honest, I can't help but be a little worried right now. I mean, my whole darn CD collection series had been going just fine until the last episode, and by the end of the last video, everything went straight to L. You know, and I can't imagine why. I, I don't know why, but... And that's where we're going to start out today, is we're going to be deep in the bowels of L. But if you'll stick with me, I promise, by the end of this video, I think we'll get out of it. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, here we are with a chapter 12, I believe it is, of my whole darn CD collection. Uh, yes, I'm going to show you another 90 CDs, the next block of 90 CDs in my CD collection. Warts and all, guilty pleasures, old favorites, new favorites. What the heck? And before we get started, I do have a few uh, late arrivals that came in. As you probably know by now, if you watched enough of these videos, I do late arrivals. Anything that uh, has arrived in my collection and been officially welcomed into my collection from the beginning of the A's all the way up to the parts I've covered now uh, that uh, weren't there before this video. Uh, starting off with this one, uh, I think uh, my, my cousin Tony mentioned this one, I think. Uh, all for One, their debut self-titled album. Uh, great stuff. Oh, gosh. Uh, I Swear. Their great romantic hit is on here, and uh, several other good songs as well. And then this next one, Edie Brickell and the New Bohemians, uh, their album Stranger Things. No connection to the Netflix series. This album came out in uh, 2006. Uh, but yes, a great album. This was, I believe, the last album in the Edie Brickell discography. Maybe I'm wrong, but one, one of the last, at least, that I had been missing. Found it at House of Records a few weeks back and listened to it. And it's just it seems like each one of her albums I like a little bit more than the last. And uh, what is the one really good song? Long Lost Friend, I think is what it is. Is It's got a really, really catchy beat and a great hook to it. I mean, all the songs are good, but uh, that one particularly, Long Lost Friend. And this album as a whole kind of has a bit more of a world music, or at least Latin music, um, uh, gloss over it, I guess you'd say. Some, uh, several of the songs seem to have Latin rhythms or, or some other kind of world music. Uh, very good stuff, as are all of her albums. And then this one, this one, Marie Digby. Uh, I, ha I think I had heard of her. I found this CD at uh, a St. Vinny's thrift store a few weeks ago and decided to go ahead and just pick it up. And uh, she actually does one of the th songs that she became famous for at the very beginning of her career was a uh, an acoustic cover of Umbrella by, was it Beyonce that did that song originally? Uh, and that is uh, the closing track on this album. Very good stuff. She's a great uh, folk rock singer. Kind of kind of folkish rock. Very, very good stuff. And then this one I also found at a St. Vinny's store, but uh, earlier on, uh, Indecent Obsession. This is a group from the late 80s. 1989, I believe is what it says. It's it's very tiny, so I can't read it. But yeah, 1989, great uh, end of the 80s dance pop, uh, synth pop kind of stuff. Great stuff. This is the kind of thing that, uh, oh, along with what was the other CD I mentioned recently that uh, is kind of at the very end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s, I was just kind of buying CDs at random just to sample the stuff out. You know, was really putting my feelers out there to see what was out there. And... There was another CD I mentioned, I think it was in the last chapter, uh, that and that is one that I, if I had heard back then, I would have glommed onto and would have stayed a favorite of mine all this time. It's been hit and miss with some late 80s, early 90s stuff I've picked up in the last few years, but that one and this one are exceptions. I mean, this is one that if I had heard them back in the day, uh, this one would have been a favorite of mine all these years. Very, very good stuff. Um... Uh, Pretty much every track on here is is good. Uh, yeah, if you like the 80s, uh, new wave-ish kind of stuff, you would not be disappointed with Indecent Obsession. It's their self-titled album, by the way. They're actually an Australian group, interesting enough. Okay, so that is... I think I better put these somewhere else, or they will fall through the slot of... The, or the crack slot. 
space, whatever this is, of this uh, CD rack that I have here. I have a big CD rack here that I put all my stuff in. Anyway, on with the uh, regular block of 90 CDs in this installment of my Hold On CD collection, starting off with uh, a fairly good-sized discography. I've got, what, five? Six CDs by this guy. Sondre Lerche. I've talked about this guy before. He is a Dutch? I think. Either Dutch or Norwegian. No, I think he's Norwegian. Uh, pop, rock, singer, songwriter. Uh, great stuff on here. Uh, on all of his albums. I just, uh, I had tried him years ago. Fell, uh, fell off on him or just, he did, just didn't click with me at the, at the time. But, uh, yeah, I couldn't tell you. It's been a while since I've listened to this album, so I couldn't tell you what uh, standout tracks are. But this one, which is the one that uh, really started it all, um, Two Way Monologue is the name of this one. And this is a sophomore album, and it's fantastic. The title track is excellent. And, uh, gosh, I, none of the songs are... Oh, Stupid Memory, I think, is another really good one. Uh, I, I'm not uh, connecting the songs with their titles, uh, so I can't tell you off the bat what are the really good tracks on here, but uh, trust me, he is worth listening to if you have not checked him out yet. Uh, Sondra Lerk and the Faces Down Quartet uh, with uh, this album, The Duper Sessions. And uh, this one has a bit more a bit more of a jazz uh, feel to it, and as kind of suggested by the fact that he's got a quartet backing him. And then, well, this is another one, uh, oh, Sandra Lerke and the Faces Down, not a quartet anymore, with the album Phantom Punch. It's a bit more of a rockish kind of thing, uh, new wave sort of rock, and it, it's hard to describe his music, really. It's, some of it's singer-songwriter, some of it's rock, uh, some of it has a bit of a bossa nova kind of a twist to it, so it, it's a little bit of a jazzy influence on a lot of his music, actually. And then this might be my favorite album of his, Heartbeat Radio. Excellent uh, album. The title track is great. Uh, if Only is a fantastic song. Uh, Words and Music is another good one. And I Guess It's Gonna Rain Today is another really good one, so yeah. I would suggest starting out with either Heartbeat Radio or Two-way monologue, if you want to check out Sondra Darka. And here is his self-titled album. And... Yeah, I couldn't... Uh, the song titles are just not ringing a bell for me. That's the trouble. As I've mentioned before, it's the trouble with having so many CDs is I don't get around to listening to nearly as many of them nearly as often as I should. So, Which is kind of the thing that keeps compelling me. Maybe I should be trimming down my collection. Uh, and then we have Blake Lewis. Uh, we have an American Idol runner-up for season six. Uh, this is his debut album, Audio Daydream. Excellent stuff. This was before I started watching American Idol, but he's excellent. And his follow-up album, Heartbreak on Vinyl. And there we go with the uh, uh, the title track, of course, is one of my favorites. Uh, the, there's songs that songs whose lyrics have to do with music is, is a... I have a soft spot for those, uh, obviously. Now, this next artist I have a complete discography of, and I actually have his first four albums on vinyl, so I probably could get rid of these CDs, but I just haven't uh, been able to bring myself to do so yet. Huey Lewis and the News. Uh, this is his their self-titled debut album. Uh, Some of My Lies Are True is a great song. Stop Trying is also excellent. Uh, Don't Ever Tell Me That You Love Me. And Hearts are four of the outstanding songs on here. Now, this is an artist whose discography I know, because uh, I've, I've loved these guys since the 80s. Um, and uh, their so sophomore album, Picture This, uh, Change of Heart is a great song. Hope You Love Me Like You Say You Do is an outstanding song. Working for a Living is one of his big hits. Uh, do, be, do You Believe in Love is a great song. And these guys just knew how to they just knew how to do great, great music. I mean, a lot of their songs had kind of a doo-wop influence, and some of the stuff was just classic barroom rock, 
and they delved here uh, now and then into a new wave sort of sound, which was kind of the trend with the 80s, obviously. And then here is their big, big hit album, Sports, their uh, breakthrough, The Heart of Rock and Roll, Heart and Soul, uh, I Want a New Drug, Walking on a Thin Line, If This Is It, which is one of my favorite Huey Lewis and the News songs. And then their album, Four, which is their fourth album, very cleverly titled. Uh, Jacob's, Jacob's Ladder is the opening track, and that is a cover of a Bruce Hornsby song. And then uh, Stuck With You is another great song, another one of those songs that highlights their doo-wop influence. And Doing It All For My Baby, that's a great song. Hip To Be Square, that's, uh, that's one of my absolute favorite, one of my favorite songs of all time. Certainly of the 80s, at least. And uh, yeah, plenty more good songs where those came from. And then their next album, Small World. Uh, here we go. Perfect World is a, is a great song. And then they have, uh, actually, the title track is actually in two installments, Small World Part 1 and Small World Part 2. And uh, Give Me the Keys and I'll Drive You Crazy. That's one of my favorite Huey Lewis news songs. That's a good one. And then their fifth, sixth album, Hard at Play. Uh, Build Me Up is a fantastic blues song. It's one of my favorite opening tracks off of any album it's just a great it starts out kind of subdued and then just and then it just slams into high gear it's just a great one a uh, couple days off is one of their biggest hits that's off of this album and uh it hit me like a hammer that's another really good song and that's not me that's another great song then they broke from the original material for a while to do a covers album this is one of my favorite album titles of all time Four Chords and Several Years Ago. Don't you love it? It's uh, an album of uh, pop and rock and rhythm and blues and blues songs from the 50s and 60s. Classic rock songs like, oh, they've got he's got to have some, uh, some Chuck Berry songs on here, some Fats Domino, some Little Richard, and just all sorts of stuff on here. Uh, Blue Monday, one of my favorite Fats Domino songs. And one, another one of my favorite... Um, one of my favorite Huey Lewis and the News songs, one of my favorite classic songs of all time, and one of my favorite cover songs. Uh, they do a rendition of Mother-in-Law, which I can't remember who originally the, did the song, but uh, Dr. John guests on vocals, uh, uh, guest vocals on this song. So uh, yeah, that's an, that's an absolute standout on this album. So as you can tell, I love me some Huey Lewis and the News. I love them so much that I do have... Uh, a greatest hits album, a best of album of theirs, even though I have all of their studio albums, because this one has several non-album songs. Uh, it has um, The Power of Love, their song from Back to the Future, as well as two or three other songs that were not on any of their al uh, other studio albums. So this has some previously unreleased stuff, and that's why I have it. And then they go into their the second phase of their career, I guess, maybe third, I don't know. Phases or phases. Plan B is their next album, and uh, this one and their subsequent ones were not quite as successful as their previous albums, but still very, very good. Uh, we're not here for a long time, we're here for a good time, is the opening track on this one. And then um, I'm Not In Love Yet is a duet with Winona, and uh, so they do a duet with her on here. And The Rhythm Ranch is another really good song. Uh, let's see, I thought there was another one. There was another one I thought was uh, I really enjoyed, but I can't think of what it was. And then down to their last couple of albums. Uh, in addition to not being as memorable or as hit-packed or as successful as their earlier albums, their later albums came out with uh, far less frequency. So just in the last 20 years, they've only put out like three albums. And this is a another covers album. This is Soulsville. And it's got some, uh, as the title suggests, some soul covers from the 60s and 70s, I think. Uh, Respect Yourself is on here. And that's the only song I recognize by its title. So, And then their most recent and, sadly, most likely their final album, uh, because he has uh, developed an ear, uh, hearing disorder, that has uh, rendered his singing and playing a little less effective. 
very sad to hear that he's uh, basically retired from singing, but his swan song, Weather, is... Uh, it's only got seven tracks, so it's probably more of an EP than an album, but uh, in my opinion, they went out on a high note, uh, pun intended. So yeah, very, very good stuff. Great, great artist. Uh, let me take a drink of water here. Mm. A bit of a dry throat going on. Anyway, uh, speaking of classic artists that Huey Lewis, Huey Lewis and the News have covered before, we have Jerry Lee Lewis. The Essential Sun Sessions is this album. It's uh, two discs packed with his classic, classic hits. Uh, in some parts of his career, he's kind of been morally dubious. i uh, done some things that uh, would certainly be frowned upon today. Definitely. But uh, you got to hand it to him. He had the musical chops. One of the pioneers of rock and roll, and for darn good reason. Great, great stuff. Then we have, uh, I've only got one album by this guy. I used to have a couple of others, but this is the only one that stuck. Jamie Liddell. Uh, this is his album, Jim. It's um, R&B, dance pop kind of stuff. Really, really good. Um, kind of borders on EDM, electronic dance music. And let's see. Um, Another Day is a great song. And uh, a little bit of Feel Good is another really good one. So... Yeah, I, I would suggest checking out Jamie Liddell if you like the uh, contemporary hmm, dance pop oriented R&B. I guess it would be the best, yeah, best way to describe it. And then we have the debut album by Lifehouse. And this is their one and o their only album that I have. Uh, and it again, kind of like Jamie Liddell, it's the only one that really stuck. Uh, I, I did used to have several of their albums. Was it them? Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, yeah, as I said, this is the only one that really, really stuck with me. Yeah, but I've been having the itch lately to possibly go back and revisit those uh, more recent albums. Who knows? Then we have an artist, one of my absolute favorite artists of all time, and you guys have probably never heard of him, except in the possible times that I've mentioned him on my, on my channel. And that is Espen Lind. Uh, this is his debut album, Red. Uh, he is currently, if you've seen uh, in the in the credits of albums and songs, uh, when they are produced by Espionage, Espen Lind is one half of Espionage. They are pro a production duo. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, in more recent years, Espen Lind has been much more in the songwriting and production thing and has not put out an album in quite a while. But I love this guy's album. I uh, albums. I found out about him on some pop compilation, which you will see in when I get to my compilations at the end of this uh, series. But uh, yeah, uh, When Susanna Cries is the one song that came closest to breaking him through in the U.S., but it never really happened. It was a very, very minor hit. Uh, but that one's on here, and uh, the guy is just so good at what he does. I mean, um, Baby You're So Cool has very, very much of a Prince vibe. If you dig Prince, you got to hear that song, Baby, You're So Cool. And uh, All I Want Is an Angel is a great, upbeat, dance-ish pop song. So, uh, you know, he, he so it's like he does the funk, he does the pop, he does the soul, he does a little bit of rock. I mean, he can just... Uh, <clears throat> it's kind of stands to reason. If you listen to his studio albums, you can kind of uh, see why... He's made a career for himself in songwriting and production, too. So, uh, But I still wish that he had kept on putting out studio albums. I really miss new studio albums from him. Uh, his sophomore album, uh, This Is Pop Music. Actually, when, when you get technical, this is his third album and this is his fourth album. You'll see his other two albums later on, and you'll, you'll understand why. Uh, yeah, his fourth album, This Is Pop Music. This is one of my favorite albums. Well, uh, when you saw my... Uh, greatest, al my favorite albums of the tw of the 2000s. When you saw my favorite albums of the 2000s, this was in the top 10. I'm pretty sure it still was in the top 10. But yes, I absolutely love, love, love this album. Uh, Joni Mitchell on the radio is the opening track. It's great. Uh, Where the Lost Ones Go. That is a duet with a Norwegian artist, uh, singer named Sissel. And I've mentioned her before. She's the one who did uh, all the vocals that you hear in Titanic, except for uh, the Celine Dion's, <coughs> excuse me, the Celine Dion song "My Heart Will Go On," 
all of the rest of the vocals are sisal. But, uh, so yeah, he does this one. Um, uh, Everything's Falling Apart is another good song. So the lyrics on this album are kind of dark, but I mean, the instrumentation is hooky as heck and uh, just one great song after another. And this album, another thing about this album was uh, for like the first 10 or 12 listens that I gave to it, I kept hearing new little things. I mean, he would put so many little production touches in each of the little, in each of the songs, just little little blips and noises and of and whatnot and percussion flourishes and stuff. And I kept on hearing new things I hadn't heard in the previous lessons. That that's that kind of album. So, and then his uh, subsequent album, April, which is much more of a ballad centric album. Uh, I guess he kind of thought that just decided to change directions after such a uh, pop-oriented album, uh, uh, instrumentally at least, uh, upbeat album. And uh, Million Miles Away is a good song. Unloved is a great ballad. Uh, Life Will Turn Around, that's one of the optimistic songs on here. And, uh, yeah, uh, not one of my favorite albums of his, but still very, very good. And then his most recent uh, studio album, is Army of One, and another great album. Um, let's see. Hopelessly Happy. That's a very uh, uh, sardonic, I think that's the word, sardonically witted uh, song. And the music takes you there. It's me and my songs about music. And then, um, let's see. Oh, I can't remember. Oh, Scared of Heights. That's a song that... Uh, you remember when Train did a couple of songs with the ukulele? Um, what was the one? Um, hey, Soul Sister. That was a song that was produced by Espionage. Espen Lind and uh, Amon Bjorklund is his production partner in uh, Espionage. And so if you hear his song Scared of Heights, that will kind of, that's kind of a natural connection to, you know, you listen to that and you say, oh yeah, of course, he, of course he's the guy that did um, um, uh, Hey, Soul Sister. The song whose title for some reason I can't remember right now. Anyway, that is the Espenlind studio albums discography, but he got together with three other musicians, three other Norwegian musicians, and put out a pair of live albums. They are outstanding. Uh, Hallelujah Live, Volume 1 and Volume 2. And uh, the, the other three guys on this on this uh, pair of albums are Kurt Nilsson, who was a the winner of the first season of Norwegian Idol, and Alejandro Fuentes, who, despite his very Latin-sounding name, is a Norwegian, and he was a runner-up on a, or no, excuse me, a finalist, I don't think he was second place, on a subsequent season of Norwegian Idol. And Askil Holm, and I'm not sure what his credentials are, I'm not sure uh, where he came from uh, in terms of, uh, you know, how he gained prominence in Norwegian music, but uh, yes, those three guys team up with Espen Lind and do an, and do an absolute knockout pair of live albums. Uh, of course, the, the uh, repertoire is basically uh, each of these guys' solo hits. You know, they each do uh, some of their... Well, they collectively do solo hits by each of the four guys. That's what I'm trying to say. And they also uh, do cover songs from uh, other artists, like uh, Kiss from a Rose, the Seal song, is one of those that they do, and uh, Mary Jane's Last Dance, which, which was a uh, Tom Petty song. And what are some of the other ones? Um, Desire, which is a U, uh, the U2 song, they cover that one. The Boys of Summer, the Don Henley song. Don Henley, or... Yeah, Don Henley. And uh, I Got a Woman, which is... Uh, a, a song that Ray Charles made famous, and of course the title track, Hallelujah, the Leonard Cohen song. And so that's just what's on Volume 1. And on Volume 2, they do, uh, oh gosh, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover, the uh, uh, Paul Simon song, The Gambler, the Kenny Rogers song, and one of my favorite, they cover one of my favorite 80s songs of all time, and they do an amazing job of it, Easy Lover, the Phil Collins and Philip Bailey song, they do a great job on that one. I love that one. Yes. So, as you can tell, I love these albums. They're, they're 
probably kind of hard to find. Well, maybe not so hard to find uh, because I bought them long before I uh, hopped onto Discogs, so they may be easily available on Discogs. But if you like live albums and you like a real great mixture of, you know, or original tunes, which would be, you know, original to you if you've never heard them before, as well as covers, I highly recommend the two Hallelujah Live volumes by these guys. Fantastic stuff. And I am not even halfway done yet, and I, <laughs> this video is probably going to run an hour long, but so I, I got to step up the uh, pace here. John Lithgow, uh, singing in the bathtub. And in case you're wondering, yes, John Lithgow, the actor, is also a very, very good singer. And if you're wondering how this CD ended up in my collection, it was from my sister. It was one of her CDs uh, that I inherited in her collection. Could not pass it up. She loved children's albums. She loved children's books. Uh, you know, being a school teacher, I don't know if that just kind of uh, comes with the territory or what, but uh, yeah. Well, I, I won't go over the track list. I need to uh, pick up the pace here if I'm going to make this video a reasonable length. So uh, suffice to say, it's a fun album. And John Lithgow is his entertaining self. What can I say? These next two CDs are... One of them was actually a gift from a close friend of mine. And the other one was one that I bought because of this friendship. Little Mix. Somebody watching this, vid somebody watching this video is going to be very happy right now. Uh, yes, and... Uh, those of you who are, are friends with this friend, you know who the friend is. Uh, yes, their, their album, Salute. And I think that's the one that my friend sent me. And this is the other one that I have. Uh, Get Weird, the deluxe edition. And yes, this is the one that I found actually at Epic Seconds because it's got the uh, scars from removing the price sticker, which they, they always put on the spine of the album. So, uh, Good stuff. They're talented singers. Um, I, I always have trouble, and I've told him this before, always have trouble getting into uh, girl pop and R&B groups. I don't know why, but uh, I, I, I've, these CDs will not leave my collection, except by, unless it's some disastrous means that, that they have to leave my collection. So, uh, so I, I will definitely I'll give a concerted effort to listen to them more often. How, how, how's, the, how's that? Is that a good compromise? Next up, uh, another classic, classic rocker, Little Richard. Mentioned him just a couple minutes ago. This is his very best of. I mean, he needs no introduction. He needs no explanation. Uh, just fantastic. One of the absolute pioneers of rock and roll, and for a darn good reason. Amazing stuff. Then we have uh, 80s rock, Living Color, with their album Vivid. This is the one that really, um, their breakthrough album, Cult of Personality, which... That song and its lyrics have become oh, oddly uh, appropriate during the last oh, five or six years. Uh, but I, I won't go into that, but a uh, fantastic album. And just real muscly hard rock performed by African-American musicians. Uh, I think they were American. But uh, yeah, just, you know, uh, black musicians are really only associated with R&B, soul, hip-hop. So they kind of they kind of broke a barrier, especially back in the '80s, for by by doing rock. So uh, that's a, it, an absolutely um, one thing that they need to be uh, held in the canon of music for is is that uh, kind of breaking that barrier is a excellent, uh, and they were excellent at it. I mean, just fantastic songs, front to back on that album. And then we have uh, uh, speaking of R and B, which I just mentioned. We have a much more recent favorite, Lizzo, with her album, Cause I Love You. No explanation necessary, right? And her subsequent album, Special, which is uh, just as good. Don't know if it's better than her first album, but uh, I really, really enjoy them both. It, it's close. It's a very close race between those two albums. And then we have uh, not a very uh, lengthy discography of these guys, but I have a fair little chunk of, their, of his music. Kenny Loggins. Uh, this uh, this CD I think was from, if I remember correctly, was from Noah. My good, my little brother Noah uh, sent me this one. It is a uh, a live album that uh, took place in an outdoor setting. Very very cool album. He plays all of his hits on here. Uh, excellent stuff, and very very happy to add that to my collection. And then we have uh, this one was from my sister. It is uh, Return to Pooh Corner, again an album of. Uh, children's songs, or at least uh, kid-friendly songs, by Kenny Loggins. And that one made me pick up 
uh, as from uh, from Skips, one of my last trips to Skips, uh, he, they had the sequel, uh, more songs from Pooh Corner. So, yeah, the, the first installment is from my sister, and the second installment is uh, has strong memories to Skips tied to it. So they just go together that way, I guess, huh? And then to fill in all of the uh, necessary gaps with any other albums of his that I don't have, the essential Kenny Loggins, two discs. All of his movie hits are on here, Danger Zone uh, from uh, Top Gun, as well as uh, Nobody's Fool, the theme from, oh, theme from Caddyshack 2, Footloose, of course, and I'm All Right from Caddyshack. What more Kenny Loggins do you want? The CD has it all. And then we have, uh, moving on into Latin rock, we have Los Lonely Boys. Uh, my sister loved these guys. Uh, she had, I can't remember if this one was from, no, I think I already had this one, but this was also in her collection, so I just was uh, happy, happily gave that away to uh, other people. Uh, but yes, some great songs on here. Uh, let's see, Heaven is a fantastic song, and... Uh, what was the other one? I thought that was another one that was really, really good. Uh, More Than Love, I guess. And then their sophomore album, Sacred. Make a, um, Orale is a great song. Diamonds is one of the best songs of theirs. And uh, One More Day is also a really, really good song. So excellent group, Los Lonely Boys. Uh, but those are the only two albums of theirs that I have. I picked up their third one, and it kind of it was not nearly as memorable or as uh, catchy to me as... Well, their songs are not really catchy, but, you know, it just didn't uh, click with me as their other two albums did, their, their first two albums. Then we have a classic rock group, The Love and Spoonful. Uh, this is actually a two-in-one, uh, two two-albums-in-one disc. Uh, Do You Believe in Magic, as well as uh, their sophomore album, Daydream, which is obscured by the uh, Obi strip here, but yes, found this at um, House of Records. And so, yeah, both albums on one handy dandy CD. So, <clears throat> some great songs from these guys. Uh, Do You Believe in Magic? And of course, Daydream, the title track for the two albums. And uh, Do You Ever Have to Make Up Your Mind is another great song. So, yeah, a group worth checking out if you have not checked them out yet. Now we have one of the few hip-hop albums that I have in my collection. And some of you guys, this is uh, kind of early hip-hop, so a lot of you guys might not know about this guy. His name is Lucas, and uh, this is his album, his debut album, Lucas-centric. And the, I think, which I think was his biggest hit, Lucas with the Lid Off is the name of that song. It's really good. And uh, yeah, this was just, uh, there was a show... I'll go into this at some other point in more detail if you want me to, but there was a music review show back on back in the early 90s, late 80s. Oh, this is 1994, so the mid-90s. And that's where I first heard about this guy, as well as G-Love and Special Sauce. And I can't remember the name of the guy who's... He's gone to be a uh, <coughs> fairly popular comedian and actor, and he was one of the hosts or co-hosts of that show, the name of which I can't remember. But anyway, that's how I found out about Lucas. Forgot about him for years and years until I saw this CD crop up in the racks. And I decided, you know, I have fond memories of Lucas with the lid off. So I bought the album. Turns out I kind of like it. So uh, anyway, this next artist, I have two albums by him or by them. It's a rock band called Ludo. And they have a really quirky and irreverent sense of humor in a lot of their lyrics. I think, uh, well, I was going to say uh, Bare Naked Ladies, but Bare Naked Ladies are a bit more just innocently wacky, whereas these guys have a little bit more irreverence and uh, slightly more adult nature. You know, they, they don't get uh, obscene or graphic or anything like that. It's just funny, kind of suggestive humor. For instance, there's a song on here on their first album, you're Awful, I Love You. There's a song called Mutiny Below. And it's a song about um, a certain physiological response that happens in males when they're uh, uh, exposed to certain stimuli. 
let's I'll, I'll just leave it at that and you can fill in the blanks so yeah you know that that kind of humor is, you know they don't they don't come out right and say you know PG13 or R rated things but uh, yeah they, 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 they make they suggest the funny stuff and uh, uh, there's uh, yeah I can't think of any other uh, the names of the songs are not really coming uh, coming to me uh, with uh, funny stuff in them by looking at the track listing. Um, and here's another uh, another example of their funny, irreverent sense of humor, slightly wacky sense of humor. Their sophomore album is called Prepare the Preparations. That's my kind of sense of humor, okay? So, uh, yeah, these, these guys are fun. And it, it's basically, it's rock music, kind of, uh, you know, modern alt-rock, I guess you'd say. This is the best basic way to describe it. So, <clears throat> gotta take another drink here. My uh, <clears throat> throat's been a little bit dry today. Anyway, moving on to this, the second half of my video. Uh, we're already 36 minutes in, so I'm gonna try not to make it too much longer. I'm gonna try to speed through these a little bit more. We have Ben Loomis. Uh, this is a world idol. Uh, he was the winner of a New Zealand, I think the first year of the New Zealand idol competition. Uh, as is the case with most uh, idol winners uh, and their first albums, pretty uh, basic pop rock, radio-friendly rock kind of stuff. Not bad. Uh, it's uh, pretty good. It's just, uh, it wasn't, uh, you know, I haven't listened to it in a while, but I just, it's uh, good enough that I haven't, just, I decided not, not to get rid of it. That's what I'm trying to say. Having trouble talking today. Anyway, back to uh, some throwback classic pop rock uh, R&B from the early years of rock and roll. Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers. Uh, yes, Frankie Lyman was like uh, 14 years old when uh, this group started, so uh, kind of a remarkably young um, mainstream pop performer from the day. Uh, uh, Goody Goody is one of their big hits. Uh, Little Bitty Pretty One is one of their, the more popular songs that they did. Why Do Fools Fall in Love? Another fantastic one, and uh, there was another one. I thought uh, I can't I can't see it from an in, tra in the track listing, but a great album uh, when you want a little dose of classic pop and rock, classic R and B from the fifties. Great stuff. Then we have my one and only Loretta Lynn album, which is a very recent one. Van Leer Rose, uh, produced by Jack White. Uh, good stuff. I picked this one up. Uh, when I saw that it was coming up on a Backtracks anniversary. Remember way back when I did Backtracks on my channel? Uh, so I, uh, And another reason I bought it was because they have a song on here called Portland, Oregon. And it's, a, and it's actually a duet with Jack White. Uh, so that was kind of a reason why I bought the CD, and uh, also so I could show it as a prop in my Backtracks video. Probably a silly reason to uh, buy a CD, but it was used. It was only like four or five bucks, and... It was right on time for me to feature it in a video. So the stars aligned for that to happen. Then we have another um, world idol. This was uh, another winner uh, from Norwegian Idol, uh, Glenn Lease. He was, I think, like season season four or season five, if I remember correctly, of uh, um, Norwegian Idol. And I think I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. But yes, his debut album, Come Closer... Um, Days Go By was the, the hit single on Norwegian radio that uh, I heard before picking up the album. And again, kind of like Ben Loomis, um, not super outstanding, but uh, good enough that I don't, don't want to get rid of it. And, uh, oh, here we have another uh, another idol. This, was, this guy was the runner-up in a German idol competition, uh, Fadi Malouf is his name. And yes, he sounds uh, Middle Eastern. I think he is, uh, he was Jordanian or something um, of heritage, but he was raised in Germany. Uh, yeah, good. And again, you know, your basic pop rock stuff. Uh, very good stuff. And he was actually, uh, I liked him enough to pick up his sophomore album, Into the Light. Uh, some other good stuff in here. And Oh, he does a cover of Listen to Your Heart, the... I can't remember who did that song. Was it Heart? No, I don't think it was Heart. I don't know who did. Let's look it up. Uh, and 
I thought there was an, I thought this guy did a cover on this album as well. Oh, will you still love me tomorrow? I think it's I guess a cover of the um, Carol King song. Anyway, there you have Fadi Malouf, uh, his first two albums, and then we're going into one of my recent favorites, uh, an absolute favorite. Every time I see an album of this guy is coming down the pike, it's it's a guaranteed purchase for me. Seth MacFarlane, uh, gotta love this guy. He's like has just an absolutely gorgeous singing voice. I mean, is this guy not talented in anything? I mean, you know, voice acting, uh, writing, directing, producing, and singing. He does it all, right? Uh, this is his debut album, Music is Better Than Words. And sophomore album, No One Ever Tells You. And his third album, In Full Swing. And what's great about this guy's albums is he doesn't do the songs that are on all those other, you know, Great American Songbook standard albums. He does, he picks songs that are not heard a lot. So, you know, off the beaten path songs, and that's one of the reasons I love his album so much. And then we have Once in a While, his fourth album. And then he diverted into uh, great songs from stage and screen, which I guess a lot of those easy listening songs from back then did originally come from movies. So more than you would realize, actually, came from being featured in movies. And his most recent album from this year, Blue Skies. The title track is one of my favorites. I love it. And uh, so, yeah, I have not been disappointed in any of his albums yet. He also has a Christmas album, a holiday album, that I will show you when I show you my holiday albums. And uh, actually, this album is another one from a uh, friend of mine, the same friend uh, that introduced me to Little Mix. So, yes, hey, he's getting featured twice or mentioned twice in this one block of uh, my CD collection, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, and and another of the few examples of hip-hop that I have in my collection. Uh, this is their breakthrough album, The Heist. I liked it a lot more than I thought I would, and uh, thanks to him. And uh, I actually replaced, full confession, I replaced the one that he gave me with this one because that one was censored, and it turns out this one is also censored. So was there an uncensored version of this album? I don't know. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> and I did not see any stickers. This one was still sealed, and I did not see any stickers uh, saying, you know, edited version or anything. So, I don't know. Was there an uncensored version of that album? If anybody knows, drop it in the comments. And then we have a best of CD by the 80s group Madness. And another, another group that's kind of a little bit wacky. They were kind of I guess you could say, in a way, they were progenitors of Bare Naked Ladies. A little offbeat. Uh, their, their sense of humor was kind of offbeat. But yes, this has Our House, their great big hit, and House of Fun, another one of my favorite songs of theirs. And uh, It Must Be Love is another great song of theirs. So, <clears throat> And then here's another artist by whom I have a, so far, complete discography, I think. I don't think I'm missing there any uh, recent albums. Magic, with uh, the album Don't Kill the Magic, and the song Rude, off of here, which was their big hit single. In my opinion, it's that's my least favorite song on this album. So, if you're kind of dismissing them from that one song, Rude, give them another listen. They're, good, they're great artists. And here's their sophomore album, Primary Colors. Great stuff. And that's uh, spelled the proper uh, English-slash-Canadian way because they're a Canadian band. And then we have their most recent, I think, most recent album, Expectations. And each one of their albums is just as good as the last one. And I actually didn't realize this one was out until a few months after it had, it had already come out. So, But yes, I have kind of fallen off, on the, off of the radar. I need to see if they've put out any more albums since then. Now, this album I found up at uh, Music Millennium a few years ago. Uh, I just took a chance on it, picked up, didn't, hadn't heard of the group before. They're called Magic Man, and they're rock with a little bit of electronic dance type stuff in it. In that respect, I guess they're a little bit like the Killers. So, uh, decent stuff on here. I uh, couldn't uh, cite any, uh, you know, pick out any songs by their titles, but uh, good stuff. 
And then this artist, uh, I used to have more than their first album, uh, but those subsequent albums, they just ended up not really sticking with me. So all I have is his first. Molly Music is his name, and this is his debut album. Debut, I think. Molly is. Uh, I found out about him when he uh, did a guest performance on American Idol one season. And so, yeah, pretty good stuff. Uh, Delves a little bit into the hip-hop um, realm. So, now this this guy... Yeah, sorry, I had to uh, do a little guesstimating to phrase this properly. Uh, you will see the group that this guy is from in the next installment of my uh, CD collection. His name is Raul Malo, and uh, he is just, he's a great, uh, a great artist. It's got, he's got a kind of a distinctive voice, and this is his album, uh, After Hours, and it's got mostly covers of uh, uh, classic songs. Now and then there's A Fool Such As I, and uh, a Cold Cold Heart, and It Only Hurts Me When I Cry. Uh, this is kind of a so this is kind of a throwback covers album of his, and he also does some original material. Uh, Lucky One is the subsequent album, and two of these CDs I found at a store out in Bend, Oregon. Uh, Sinners and Saints is his next album. He's the frontman for a Tex-Mex uh, country slash rock group called the Mavericks, and so you will see them in I believe my next, maybe not my next episode, might be an episode after that. So uh, yeah. Good stuff. His solo stuff is just as good as the Maverick stuff. And then we have some classic pop from the 60s, The Mamas and the Papas. This is a three-disc collection of their greatest hits. And I kind of wish I had kept... There was a two-disc set that had um, all four of their studio albums, you know, you know, in, in their entirety, on two discs. And, and I got rid of that. I don't know why I got rid of it. I was stupid. And that's one of those CDs that I would love to get back in my collection. But this is still a very, very good collection. It, it's got a lot of their solo stuff. Um, the individual member's solo hits on it as well. So. Then we have the Manhattan Transfer. They are a jazz vocal group. Very good stuff. Um, uh, Boy from New York City is one of their big hits. And uh, I won't go into other ones because I am... This video is probably going to be close to an hour long, so I want to try and get through all this stuff. <clears throat> and then we're down to some easy listening. Barry Manilow. Now we're rocking, right? Uh, hey, He's a great singer, a great artist, and this is the essential Barry Manilow, two discs full of his hits. Then we have a couple of themed albums, the greatest songs of the 70s, and the greatest songs of the 80s. And I did have, he did put out Greatest Songs of the 50s and 60s. I used to have these, but uh, got rid of them in order to save space. I might end up pur purchasing them again, I don't know. And then we have Amy Mann. <clears throat> uh, she is the wife of Michael Penn. That's neither here nor there, but uh, she's a great artist. Uh, folk rock, basically, is... Uh, I've, I'm kind of using that as a generic description because uh, uh, I can't think of any better way to describe it, but she, her music is great. And uh, yeah, I picked that one up. This one it was in the $1 section. At the time, it was the $2 section at House of Records. And I liked it enough that on a trip to Oklahoma, and I can't remember if it was my first or second trip to Oklahoma, I picked up her sophomore album, I'm With Stupid. Great title, a great album title, by the way. Very good stuff. Now we're on to uh, another Canadian group here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is the only album of theirs that I have. I've listened to, a, uh, streamed a couple of their other albums. Didn't think as highly of them as I do of this one. But I'm sure I will go back and revisit those albums at some point. Mariana's Trench with their album Astoria. Uh, this one kind of... I, I was destined to like this one, I think, because as you can tell from the cover art and from the album title, it's very, uh, they take a lot of inspiration from The Goonies, a classic, one of my favorite movies from the 80s. Um, and uh, of course, Astoria was the name of the town that The Goonies was filmed in and took place in. It's a town in 
my home state of Oregon. So yeah, very good stuff. Uh, great rockish kind of stuff. Um, a bit of a bit, I guess, a bit electro rock. I guess you'd say. At least this album is. Uh, good stuff. And then we have another artist that I've kind of been off on and off of. I got rid of her early albums, and now I would I want to get them back because her most recent album was so awesome. Marina, uh, formerly Marina and the Diamonds. This is her album, Love and Fear. Uh, it was the only one that I liked enough to keep um, at the time uh, before her most recent one came out. Ancient Dreams and Modern Land. This was, was it my number one album of its year? I think it was. If not, it was my number two. Absolutely love this album, and if I'd known I was going to love this one so much, I would have given her first three albums uh, more time to, to soak in. So yes, I want to go back and buy those albums again. It's the story of my life, I tell you. I get rid of and rebuy CDs uh, it, to an embarrassing degree, I tell you. Now we have uh, one of the few reggae discs I have in my collection, Bob Marley and the Wailers, the, uh, his, their greatest hits album, Legend. The Guy Needs No Introduction. That's kind of an album, even, even if you're not, not, even if you're not a reggae fan, you should probably still have that in your collection, I think. And then Maroon 5. We have their debut album, Songs About Jane, one of my favorite albums of the 2000s. Hit After Hit is on here. Harder to Breathe, I love that one. And uh, This Love. She Will Be Loved is another great, uh, great hit. Sunday Morning. Just one of those almost perfect albums. Maybe some of its songs got overplayed, but, you know. Then we have their follow-up album, It Won't Be Soon Before Long. Uh, I don't like it nearly as much as their debut album, but still some decent hits on here. But after this album, quite frankly, they kind of went south. And that is, as you will see in just a second here, that was the only album of theirs, uh, the, the last album of theirs that I bothered to pick up. Then we have Bruno Mars, another very recent uh, soul and R&B artist. Uh, he basically needs no introduction. Uh, hit After Hit is on here as well. And his sophomore album, Un Unorthodox Jukebox, one of my favorite album titles of all time. Then we have another artist uh, that I caught wind of thanks to my sister, Amanda Marshall. Uh, this is her debut album. She's kind of a soul slash pop rock. Yeah, pop rock with a little bit of soul and a little bit of folk in her stuff. Very, very good artist. Um, I would say give her a shot. And yes, I like that album so much that I picked up her uh, second and third albums. Um, Tuesday's Child is her sophomore album, and Everybody's Got a Story is her third album. So, good stuff. Okay, I've got five more discs to go. Can I make it under an hour? I'm going to try. Here we have Ricky Martin. Yes, uh, one of my not-so-guilty pleasures. Uh, so, Live in La Vida Loca is, a, is, of course, on here, and uh, Shake Your Bon Bon. That's, that's not one of my favorites. Uh, that's one of the sillier more cringy songs, but uh, he also has a song on here called I Count the Minutes, and there's an album I'll get to by a group called Natural. They were a boy band, and they did this song on their album. I didn't realize that it had previously been done by Ricky Martin, so that's one reason why uh, this album is... I've, I've hung on to this album. I like it, and let's face it, the guy's talented, okay? Even if he's cheesy, he's talented. And then we're into a small discography here, uh, Matchbox 20. This is their debut album, um, Yourself or Someone Like You. Great stuff. I had actually fallen off of these guys until I inherited these albums from my sister and rediscovered how good they were and got back into them. And uh, Mad Season, their sophomore album, is a great album. And I've got uh, the... CD single of the song Bent, which is one of my favorite songs of theirs. And the most recent album of theirs that I have is More Than You Think You Are. Yeah, yeah, More Than You Think You Are. I have not picked up any of their albums since, uh, just because, well, because I'm afraid I'm not going to like them as much. I haven't even tried them, so. <laughs> 
How do you know you're not going to like something if you've never even tried it, right? There's the old saying. And the last title in this collection is, uh, you kind of like with um, Tony Bennett, back when I did The Bees, uh, same story with this one that was with the Tony Bennett album. It was a, originally a four-disc box set, but I bought the albums, or the CDs individually, each of the four volumes. They were in the $2 section at Skips. So I decided to assemble, just like the Tony Bennett one, I decided to put together my own cover art, uh, you know, downloaded a picture off the web and did cover art for it myself. Uh, Johnny Mathis, a personal collection. This is uh, a four-disc set. And uh, if you'll recall with that chapter, I think it was chapter two of my CD collection, uh, same thing, uh, the same format for the track listing, and I even downloaded the uh, Sony Legacy logo so I could make it look as... Uh, as official as I could without it being actual official cover art. So, because I'm kind of a geek that way. Anyway, that will do it for, um, yeah, so I can get this album under the, or get this uh, video under the wire before it gets to be a whole hour long. That'll do it for chapter 12 of my whole darn CD collection. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't be eh, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to be notified each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember. Life's too short to be a music snob. Boy, I'm out of breath.